that you rendered for the um, United States, mm -hmm. and we just appreciate you. A lot of times we just have to let them know that we appreciate them and we're here for them, we pray for them, and um, go from there. Um, I understand exactly what you're talking about. When I came out of the Korean War, that's the way I felt. I felt that I wasn't appreciated. That they took me in. They drafted me, yes. and I wasn't appreciated. Yes. All I was waiting for was the time to pass, pass. Mm -hmm. so that I could get out. You know, you know what I mean? Because the environment that uh, mm -hmm. I was in, you know what I mean? And what I saw, I never saw this type of thing before. Mm -hmm. I never saw people butchered, you know. Mm -hmm. And then mm -hmm. w when you in battle like that, what happens is that that transition comes out. I w I'll tell you very truthfully, mm -hmm. when I came out, I was very arrogant. Mm -hmm. I was very arrogant. And the church is the thing that brought me around. That's what I was going to say. Yeah. Some kind of spiritual uh, connection. Yeah. Right. You have to have that spiritual connection right. in order to, oh, you can't to make, it. make it. You can't make and, mm -hmm. and that's what I think your position as chaplain, that's, that's very, very important for yeah. a young man mm -hmm. that's been in. You take a young man out of the street, out of high school, and you put him in that type of sadistic environment. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yes. And, and some people can take it, and some can't. Some uh, affected different ways. See, I knew when I came out, I was arrogant. <laughs> Nobody said nothing to me, no how, you know what I mean? And th that type of environment makes you that way because you got to do things because you're given an order. It has nothing to do with whether it's right, wrong, or what. They give you an order, you have to do it. And you may have, you, you may have been brought up not the army. Mm -hmm. Then you go in the army mm -hmm. and you're ordered and slaughtered to slaughter people. Mm -hmm. See, I think the service missed that point. You know what I mean? When they bring a kid out of the street, he's been playing basketball, football, and going to church, and, you know, a normal life, and they put him in an environment of slaughter. And that's what war is is slaughter. Mm -hmm. And see, some people, they're able to do it. And then the the adjustment, I just, I just feel for the young men over in Iraq because of the fact the way they were treated when they got back here in Walter Reed and other places mm -hmm. like that, it was horrible. The adjustment and people like you were mm -hmm. very, very important chaplain mm -hmm. to, for the outreach for these young men coming back because they had all kinds of problems. They had family problems. They had adjustment problems. Some of them couldn't imagine you go and put your life out, and then you can't get a job when you come back. That's the way some of them are. You know that. Yeah, it's very stressful. Yeah, very, very, yeah. very stressful. So what you're doing is very, very, very important, not only for the civilians, for the military, mm -hmm. because those, those young men, I tell anyone that like war, I said, go to Walter Reed and, mm. and the things that you see. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yes. <laughs> I'll tell you, you'll change your mind if mm -hmm. most people went there, you know, and, and actually saw the trauma which the young men were going through and how they were treated when they got back. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's very important, how they were treated when they got right, back. That's right. a very, very important thing to, to understand that the treatment of our veterans is very important. We have a new Secretary of the Veterans Affairs, and I like what he said about making sure that veterans are treated fairly. And, yeah. and that's very important because when you risk your life yeah. you, you, to uh, <laughs> serve your country, uh, the, the most important thing we should be able to do is to be treated fairly, right. treated fairly. Yes, and yeah. as you uh, two were talking, a poem came to mind by Stephen Crane. He wrote a poem entitled, War is Unkind, which mm -hmm. is irony mm -hmm. because we know war is everything mm -hmm. but that. And mm -hmm. uh, we do, on the Ed Brown Show, appreciate the, the vets. Um, we, we're just glad for their, their service and their time that they have given us. But Reverend Williams came down to my school, South River High School, uh, last River month, High and school. she talked about dreams. 
and she posed the question um, to the students, you know, what are your dreams? What are your aspirations? And she gave several points to the students that one, they, they must believe, uh, they must have an attitude, meaning a positive attitude, um, they must have courage, and they must be persistent. And that was a powerful message that she shared with our young people at South River Senior High School. And uh, Reverend Williams, I've been knowing her for for some time now, <laughs> and she has always been uh, positive. She has always been that, that spiritual light and guide, always something positive to, to help you to go along the way. She has always sown into the lives of the young people. We both attended a, a church in Columbia Park, Kentland, um, Wayside Holiness Church. Uh -huh. And uh, she was so instrumental in, in helping those uh, young people into maturation. So we just thank, we thank God for her and, and her life and her her way that she deals with, with young people and, and people, period. Uh, she also does conferences and retreats. And Reverend Williams, would you tell us about and yes. share with us about some of the conferences that you held in, in Maryland and mm -hmm. I think some in Baltimore and even Aberdeen. Just yes. tell us what you have put together, your workshops. Yes, um, I've done a lot of women's, year annual women's um, retreats, mm -hmm. which I've... Um, held since 19, I believe the end of the 90s. Mm -hmm. And originally it started out in um, Blue Mountain Christian Retreat Center mm -hmm. on the mountaintop and the women just mm -hmm. enjoyed it. It was an awesome experience for them because um, some women uh, that came had never been on the mountaintop before mm -hmm. and it was just a real experience that? at Blue Mountain Christian Retreat Center in New Ringo, Pennsylvania, New Ringo, New Pennsylvania. Ringo Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania. And each year we have women that have never um, been a, a, a participant with the um, AGO Women's Conference. And each year they go back rejuvenated. And mm -hmm. I tell mm -hmm. you, um, and, and it's just like God has really just touched them in such um, an awesome way, ways they, they could hardly even imagine. So every year, um, I used to have it every other year, but the women were so, have, have enjoyed it so much till yeah. they have requested that I do it <laughs> oh every right. year. Wonderful. And um, yes, I brought it, last year I tried something different. Mm -hmm. I brought it down um, off the mountaintop mm -hmm. in um, Aberdeen, Maryland at a Marriott um, hotel. And we had a group of women that were just, uh, I just really enjoyed the conference. We have women um, speakers that have come from Florida, Virginia, and this metropolitan area that um, preaches the gospel of Jesus Christ. And also we have workshops that um, speaks to the need of women. And not only that, um, this I will be, um, I've held youth conferences, back to school youth <coughs> conferences, in oh, the wonderful. District of Columbia. Yes, wonderful. That's been years ago, but I'm looking to do that again I because in the midst yes. of that. Because the youngsters yes, need you. Yes. Young, young students years need ago, I held the youth conferences um, in the District of Columbia. And um, after I went to the military, of course, um, some of the Greater Love Ministries um, 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 activities uh, and um, outreach ministry had. Um, pause, not stop, but pause for a moment. But I'm looking to do some more of that for the young people because it's such a great need. Oh. And even with that, yes. when I did have those um, uh, conferences for the young people, we had a group of people that came and ministered to the young folk, some from Howard University, some of my yes. colleagues, colleagues came and great. ministered to them. And I did something different one year with them. I had the young people to, to speak. I had them to come and speak, great, and we had great attendance mm -hmm. with the young people. We had a house full. I mean, we had a lot of people mm -hmm. and churches to come and participate with their young people. And what was the subject? The, sub the subject was, it's in the blood. It's in the blood. Okay. Yes, it's in the blood. And we had a lot of workshop topics. It's um, just like my daddy or 
or, or they were, we were talking about um, 